Thank you for staying with us. Plateau State, North Central Nigeria, is a land rich in tourism potential and agriculture in spite of security challenges ravaging the state. One of the agri products that the state is reputed for is Irish potato. But that is becoming increasingly difficult for many farmers to produce as they lament frequent attacks from bandits on their farms, making the produce scarce. With a boundless potential of Irish potato farming for the state and indeed Nigeria, the cost of fertilizer has also affected the quantity produced as profit becomes less and less for the farmers. Joining us in the studio is a farmer, African farmer Mogaji, to talk to us about uh, the situation around the production of Irish potato in the country. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Now, we know that a lot of persons know you about when they talk about uh, tomatoes because of <laughs> that video and all. Yeah. But um, let's look at Irish potato. Perhaps we need to start looking at uh, produce yes. one after, after the potato. other. Yes. The challenges surrounding their production and what it is government needs to do to mm. address them as quickly as possible. So today, we're focusing on potato. Yes. What is the issue? Well, um, like others, it's always a cocktail of challenges. Uh, cost of fertilizer, it has gone astronomically high. The average is like 45, 47. Okay. Um, we have uh, unprecedented uh, adulteration of uh, agro-impute, fungicides, insecticides, herbicides. Mm. The adulteration level is, you know, record time. Okay. So those two Let's assume security is taken care of. Those two is the fundamental challenge. For the Irish, adulteration. Mm. And uh, adulteration both in insecticides, fungicides, chemical uh, herbicides, and also fertilizers. The adulteration in fertilizer is huge. Unfortunately, a chunk of the fertilizers adulterated but still sold at the premium price. So, and also cost. Cost of these insecticides, everything you will use, let me just call it crop protection. Mm. Everything you will use to protect the crop has gone up by over 100%. For some, almost 300%. And what you would use to provide nutrients, so crop protection and nutrients now, that's also off the roof. So cost and adulterations are major challenges now. Mm. So talk to us about uh, the potential of Irish potato farming itself, because many persons will say it's not as common as, you know, rice and, you know, other, other foods itself. So what's the economic implication of having some of these challenges in that industry? Now, so Irish potatoes, sweet potatoes, potatoes generally. Now, when the cost of yam really goes up like we have now. That's the option. That's the option. Mm. Irish potato and sweet potato. But Irish potato is better because it's easier to peel. Mm. It cooks faster Fast. than sweet potato. Sweet potato sticks to your hand. It's not easy to peel and takes longer to cook. So that's why there's a higher demand on Irish potatoes. And, and babies, most babies, when you're about to win babies, is mostly Irish potato. So there's a huge um, on developed value chain in Irish potatoes. Mm. Now, when you have a lot of what you would do, two wool that comes from corn and coal, Irish potato paste, you know, where you use it to make like the amalan coal, mm. you know, the, the porridge. So Irish potato is a very crucial staple meal when we have challenges. And now it's getting out of hand. So if we are to look at um, the matter of cost, mm and adulteration. From your perspective as the expert, how do we really address it from the root and not just mm. the branches and the symptoms that oh, we have known? From the root, it has, we have to uh, engage in AVDAC. Mm. We have to engage in AVDAC because all these bottles have numbers of NAVDAC on them. And I want to appeal. I know NAVDAC staff will be listening to me Please don't go and use sledge and armor and say you, you know, because what normally happens is like tomorrow day after, they just go into the market and shut things up. 
you will further cause a damage. Really? Yes. So, Absolutely. yeah, because once they go after the people who sell, the distributors who sell, and lock them up, everybody stops selling. So the farmers don't even have access to the original now. Okay? The challenge is the original is very expensive, so it gives room for adulteration to come in. Hmm. And some of this adulteration, you know, a chunk of the times when Navdak wants to go and shut a place down, uh, the people already shut down before they show up. <laughs> <laughs> so, so bottom line is a systemic thing. So we don't want to deprive the people really selling original. And, and I've said this many times. Original and fake in Nigeria, or adultery, original, adulteration and fake in Nigeria is almost the same quality in terms of branding and packaging. Mm. So well, how it, do you identify which is which? You can't. It's the price that you use to differentiate. So when the farmers have tough economic scenarios around them, tractor on the average is about 30,000 per acre now, 30 to 50,000 per acre. Okay, uh, and when you say like an hectare, two and a half acres, that is one football field, 15 plots of land, you're talking about over 70,000. Okay, uh, last year it was in the 40, 35, depending on different areas. So every cost has gone almost a hundred percent high. So the farmers, for them to be able to produce, and don't forget, most of the farmers now have reduced their land size. Mm. So the person doing 20 acres is doing 10. The person doing 5 is doing 1 or 2. So now they have to minimize the cost and manage cost. And managing cost meaning, means that you will be prone to getting adulteration. That is where the challenge is. Mm. And you know, when you talk about lasting solution, it's private sector, not government anymore. Because government cannot undo all this. They are, every crop has a challenge currently. Okay? And that's not the fault of government. Climate. Like this late blight now. Mm. The fundamental challenge is late blight is caused when the climate is cooler. Mm, you know, you understand that right now we have a more cooler uh, climate yeah. than before. Yeah. So that is what is really causing the damage, the blight causing the damage currently beyond the cost. Mm. Now, government can't do anything about the weather, okay? And, but what can be done is to ensure that we have good quality. And we have private sector who are looking at coming into the agri sector to come in um, providing this input with an arrangement of repayment. If we have the banks of agriculture functional, for now there's a challenge with that, we need some other banks that have funding for agriculture. Some banks have funding for agriculture, developmental funding for agriculture that is warehoused and is not deployed. We need like ministry, private sector to you know, reach out to these banks and they helping them to unlock this funding. Now the blight which is causing the main reason why the price is going higher, that blight, the solutions are available locally. In fact, there are new agro inputs available in the country, cheaper than what they are currently using, but the information is not flowing around. So we need information. We need more publicity. I've always said it. For us to be successful in Nigeria, we need to identify media as a major stakeholder, not to report what we are doing, but also to follow up to disseminate information. We are not doing that enough, both at government, at private sector, at ministry. We need to improve that. Mm. When we get the right information out, then we'll be able to help. Like right now where we have challenges, economic challenges, price going higher, yeah. when the farmers know where to get what, it helps to actually produce. Mm. So right now, one of the challenges that the farmers are shouting about is that, oh, they thought they would be able to take advantage of the inflation mm -hmm. to make more money. More you know? money, yes. Yeah. But right now, you know, when the, price, when the new to, uh, potatoes came out, the price, prices nose dived by like 100% also, from 200 and something to about 70 something. Why? Yeah, because we, they had little in stock. So the, the people who had a few in stock were cashing out. Mm. But the farmers also are losing out. 
because when they produce, they have to sell. Yeah. Storage is a major conversation Problem. that takes power, electricity. Mm. I've been to India to do a few studies about sweet potato also. It's the private sector that provides the storage around locations where they are producing the potatoes. So when you're harvesting, they provide. So the farmer either rents space or sells to them, and they keep it for some time and sell. Sure. Even though government also has, but private sector has more in all the locations that I, I went to. So we need to open up, like I always say, these opportunities to the private sector. Mm. Once we open it up to the private sector and tell them what, we, and government tells them what they would do to protect and make sure it's sustainable, the private sector, many people will want to put their money in because their money currently is useless in the banks. All right. Uh, all right. Be before you ask your question, okay. let's quickly go on a break. Uh, when we return, we'll continue this conversation in the studio. Stay with us. Hi, this is Dr. Abiola Salani, the world-class performance strategist and publisher at the Peak Performer Africa. We're excited to invite you to nominate outstanding individuals for the Peak Performer Recognition 2024. We're seeking to recognize highly esteemed executives who are actively driving a culture of peak performance in their industry by taking personal responsibility for delivery results, as well as promoting a collaborative, inclusive, and psychologically safe work environment. We are accepting nominations in three categories. One, the peak performing leader of the year. Two, the peak performing woman of the year. And three, the peak performing emerging leader of the year. Nominating someone is easy. Simply visit www.tppafrica.com and fill out the nomination form. Deadline for submitting nominations is Thursday, 15th August. The top nominees will be announced in August on our official YouTube page. Honorees will be celebrated at a highly classy dinner, holding as the grand finale of TPP Festival in September. For tickets, tables, and sponsorships, send us an email on team at tppafrica.com. Till the next time, keep rocking your world. Bye. All right, thank you for staying with us. Before we went on the break, we were talking about uh, challenges around uh, Irish potato farming. And we still have our guest in the studio, a farmer, African farmer, Mogaji, here talking to us about the major challenges and how uh, we can resolve them. But Alameda, you wanted to ask a question before we went yes, on break. Uh, yeah. You mentioned the fact that, uh, you know, uh, the federal government doesn't have as much uh, impact or hold on uh, the climate change. But then these farmers also mentioned insecurity, the insecurity problem. Uh, in this case, uh, it was uh, the plateau farmers. So uh, probably perhaps we should be looking away from that region. What are the major areas that encourage uh, the growth of potatoes generally? Most of the northern states grow Irish potato. Most of the northern states without an exception. If I believe, because I was talking to a researcher also yesterday and saying, this is like Quara, Shaki, they have similar climate mm. to the north. They encourage the that, production. Yeah, so it's just, you see, it's like any other produce in the country. We have not explored the production across the regions. Like right now, the cooler environments, you know, grow better right now. It's just that the, we have more intense uh, weather being cool, mm -hmm. okay? So, but during the dry season, almost all the northern states plant it. So the comparative, I personally believe places like Ekiti in the dry season because it's cool mm -hmm. in southwest. It's cooler than other locations here. Mm -hmm. If you go to the Shaki axis, it's really cool in the dry season. So in the dry season, everybody produces. So in the rainy season also, we can have it produced. So we've not explored alternatives, and that is not federal, it is states. Mm. It is states. Mm. It is the states and the local government that ought to explore these opportunities. The researchers are in every state. The question is, is it priority? It's mm. always a priority issue. Many times, too much of the time now is federal, federal. It needs to be state. If we explore the states, then there is a research somewhere that would have proven that sweet potatoes can grow in other climates, mm. but it's not priority to be scaled. And that's what you see all around. Hmm. It's, my concern is still this matter of um, 
addressing cost and the adulteration. Uh, you have spoken to fertilizer and all of it, but um, the cost, who addresses that? The federal government or who exactly? So it's a tricky one. Mm. And I stand to be corrected, and I'll put over two decades on the line now. Most of, when I say most, about 95, 97% of crop protection to protect against insects, fungi attacks, they are all imported. All those agrochemicals, organic or inorganic, is dollar related. Oh. So yeah. when they are all imported, it's dollar related. Once it's dollar related, there's nothing they you can, can do, do about, about the it. cost. Okay, but government can also bring these importers to the table. Set a five-year, two-year goal. We want you to produce, or what can be produced in this uh, crop protection that you have. In the next 24 months, we want you, what do we need to do to help you? Mm. Okay, once that is done, or you need some credits, okay, some incentives. Most of the incentives we're doing now need to go to the importers, so that they can set up in the country, allow them some tax breaks, mm. you know, so that it's convenient for them because all these things is long term. Right. They won't take, the banks here don't fund long term. It's short and medium. So if they get the funding right for them, they can produce here. But you don't want to be producing here. Man, many of those people who have set up factories here also, who are doing a component of it, it's not sustainable because it's cheaper to import it than to be patriotic to produce locally. So if you bring the major players on the table, let me call it the commercial, the mid, and the small players, put them around the table, set a target, and say, we'll support you with this, and actually support them with it when you, they need the support. Not that after the photo ops and the media, they begin to struggle to get attention again. Mm. And, and most times, it's not the Ministry of Agriculture. Most times, are other ministries attached in the collaborative efforts. Mm. So we've still not gotten the food security right because there's no common, common interest. Mm. So what would be the place of you know, using other alternatives to ensure you know, uh, good soil health and uh, potato crop quality? We had a farmer here who uh, mentioned that we, we could probably explore you know, uh, some areas of animal husbandry uh, in the use of fertilizers, probably uh, animal feces and all that. So talk to us about if that is possible, especially for, you know, what is being consumed. So there's theory, there's practical. Okay. Practical is livestock is primarily 100% dependent on the crop industry. So if we have not fixed our crop, we will not be livestock sufficient or will not be protein secure from uh, livestock. So name the animal. A chunk of it, 60% to 50%, depending on the ratio and the need mm. of, of the animal, is corn. The next is soya. So if you don't have corn and soya, alternative, like you have a sweet potato, if we don't have the crop developed, we will not be protein sufficient. In other climes, developing countries, don't let us even mention developed, like India, Malaysia, Indonesia, they develop the crops. We focus on like two major crops and make it commercial across the country. Corn is something that grows in any state, in any local government in this mm. country. If we are corn secure, we will be livestock secure. Okay, so that's a fundamental thing. You can't have the, pot uh, the poultry waste, the animal dung to fertilize in the quantity required. Right. If you don't have the quantity of livestock that would give you that waste. Mm -hmm. And not only that, when, you have, when we have our livestock secured in the quantity and the quality, then the waste, the gas from the waste helps the farmers to reduce cost of buying the regular gas. So they power that gas with local technology with more than coal, mm -hmm. and they are able to reduce their feeding cost 
when feeding cost and operational cost at home drops, then it has a ripple effect. Mm. So our livestock is dependent on crops. There is no crop that we are secure in the country currently, including cassava. Mm. You know, so once we are crop secure, we'll be livestock secure. We can't do one without so it's the other. It's a value chain. It's a value chain. Now, the, the African Development Bank supported potato value chain projects in some states as about, I think, in 2022. What happened to that project? If well, that project had su succeeded, would we be where we are right now? So let me say this also. Um, some of these interventions are good, but not also fully thought through about the time it should be implemented. Okay. Now, so it's a good one for intervention of African Development Bank. But right now when we have issues with one thing or the other, we don't look at how this chain affects that chain. Okay, so yes, uh, we got intervention. Um, I don't have 100% information on that, but I will speak to you that most of the in interventions, foreign interventions we get, is not well thought through as at the time of implementation. It may take one year to say we'll do it in October. Because they are fixed October, it must be implemented in October. But the dynamics as at the time of implementation has changed. Mm. And most of these in interventions are rigid. You must do it as it has been planned. Mm. They can change it. So we now implement and, and that and we do not get the right results. We won't get the right results because the dynamics have changed. The weather has changed now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you now, if a, uh, they've approved a, a, a crop to be planted now, the crop will be affected by the weather. Mm -hmm. So we need to be more fluid. You know, one of the interventions also uh, is why we didn't, we were not tomato secure. I won't go into that because it was fixed for a time. And the project are to be implemented. All these things need to be fluid at the time of implementation. And guess what? I, would, I always say this. There is no foreign intervention that can love Nigeria like the Nigerians will bring their intervention on the table. Mm. We need Nigerian interventions that will be implemented on the table and not all the foreign, 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 foreign. Some of this foreign... But, but is that a reflection of we not having a say or impute into some of these interventions because we should let them know that uh, it is not getting the right result because implementation at a particular time, it, it needs to be fluid, bottom line, like yeah. you rightly pointed so out. So also, I operate uh, for many years in the in development space. I'm an Ashoka Fellow, IBLP Fellow, Cochra Fellow. Development, most of the intervention, most, I stand to be corrected, most of the intervention have an agenda. They want to do this, it must be done. We have the right to say, no, we don't want your intervention so that we can negotiate. But most times, because they know there's always a need around here in developing countries, especially in Nigeria, they say, we want this done and you do it. And they get satisfied because data is fundamental what developmental partners want. They get the data. It's just that we don't get the results. Mm. So we need to be able to say no to this, to various interventions. I've been around, you know, once they did around river basins, you know, almost 20 year old. It was put on hold because Abacha, uh, you know, took over government then. And so they placed a hold on the, on, on the intervention. When Abacha passed on, they still insisted that it must be done as are those documents then. Mm. But the, the parastata was telling them, no, why don't we use this and this lady said no. And so most intervention is rigid. And until we begin to, and it's a two way, we need them, they need us. Absolutely. So until we begin to say, we don't want. And once it is approved by their management, they also have to implement. So they will need to shift. So we need bold people who will say no to them. Mm. We, we say who yes. understand, who understand issues. the issues. We say yes, 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 because we think, oh, they will give us funding. No, they need data. Mm. They need data to access more money. They need the pictures to show that we are doing something. So it's a win-win. We know too much about this in the developmental funding than to be playing around. We need each other.
but all. Check. Go around the country, evaluate developmental funding. You will see that one year, two years, three years down the line, there's no impact. But they win because mm -hmm. they get data and pictures. Wow. I also like you to, you know, talk on uh, the role of research. You mentioned it earlier. Uh, to an extent, we can say that the average farmer probably got his knowledge through practical and not even the use of research, which is an area that we probably have not, you know, explored as much. We may have uh, some outcome of research, but most farmers will probably not look into that. Using research in improving, you know, disease resistance on these crops, not just even the crops, but also livestock. Okay, so, so let, me, let me take it to a, maybe in a, a little extreme dimension. Our researchers, especially in the agri sector, they need a bit of government paying attention to their mental health. Why do I say so? They've done a lot. It's frustrating when you've done so much and you keep doing and you continue to do 25 years, 15 years, and you see that the products you have can help the country and yet, not we're not doing anything. Yeah. We are abusing the mental health of our researchers. Yeah. There is nothing we need in this country that is not gathering dust in a research institute. Mm. Foreigners take our researchers out. They treat them like kings. The ones that stay here are patriotic, and yet there's nothing. Ask the son or daughter of a researcher. They don't want to end up in agri research institute. Everything we need is gathering dust in one research institute. I can't beat my chest to tell you that. We don't need anything new in this country. We just need to, you know, place premium value on our researchers, get them. We need a mandate. We need the presidency to say, each research institute, give me one, two, three. Give me three things that can be commercialized and bring the private sector to commercialize it. We have IR and T, more plantation in the Badon. They've developed breeds of poultry that will, you know, that can adapt here, is lying down there. They have the sample. It's not scaled. Well, can't the private sector step in? The, that's why I said the private sector in Nigeria is fairly ignorant and naive. Mm. They look abroad. And when they bring what they need abroad here, adaptation becomes a problem. They lose money. They think Nigeria is not working. Okay? That's the mindset. They will not go to the research institute so when they go there, they tell you, oh, this, I went to Ghana to get a particular grain that is high in lysine tryptophan that allows um, livestock for meat to mature in two weeks faster than the normal one. I came here to meet my, my former colleagues, contemporaries in school. I was bragging, and they took me to the seed bank. And in the seed bank, they had completed the research eight years before. Sorry. So what I'm, 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 I know what I'm saying, mm. okay? We just need to give them a mandate, and they will not compromise. Nigerian researchers don't compromise because it's their baby. Yeah. They protect it. And if you don't do it the way they, you, they, are, they want it done, you know, they, they call your bluff. Mm. So we just need to do a bit more in the research and get things done. I, but we I, have everything to feed the country. I think it's just a believing in ourselves, yes. in our own. Because we recall uh, Abalaka, Dr. Abalaka Datia, who found... Uh, Treatment for AIDS, something like that. He made a research many years ago. And uh, up until today, we don't know where that is, unfortunately. But we'll have to leave the conversation here and hope for the best. African farmer, Mogaji, a farmer, thank you so much for your time. Not thank you for having me. Thank you. Moving on now, it was an unexpected twist in the United States general election as President Joe Biden exits the presidential race and endorsed uh, 